Hello, Nana here. Welcome back to RimWorld Alpha 13. We are definitely in the end game now. Doing the final bit of research for the uh, ship antimatter propulsion. I expect Enzo to be able to uh, finish that probably within this day. It, yeah, I mean it's it's just after midnight, so or it's it's midnight, so we got he's got a full day. It's gonna be good. Then after we've done that research, we know the final size of all the uh, ship bits. I, I just did a little bit of, of fitting. The reactor is gonna be the largest bit. Uh, we can't uh, build it indoors. We have to build it outdoors. But the reactor is the largest bit. The core is just a, a one size. These are going to be off to the to the side, and we're going to need two structural beams. So, in in terms of length, we should actually be able to fit it inside of this space. Uh, I've already talked about it a, a little bit, I think, last episode, that we will need some space for the ship. Um, and after the episode, I was thinking about it for a bit, maybe to. Um, no, just save up a bunch of veggies. Maybe just get an outdoor uh, garden again and just no nope, use the space and build it here and if need be just break through the wall and go outside but with a little bit of, of fitting things together it worked out rather well also why do you need treatment ah the muscle parasites oh, yeah uh, that's fair um uh, brandon go go fix so and then after the episode uh also got a Comment, I think it was from uh, Roy Droid. Our, uh, no, our guiding spirit. Because I think Corpse of Roy Droid is somewhere on the graveyard here. But basically with, with a similar idea to just use the area over here. Especially considering that we are now in spring. And it's, it's in the end of spring. But we still have the entirety of summer and the early bit of autumn with good weather. So that's basically where we're going to go. Well, if you have a look at the components, the reactor, the core, and the structural beams, they're not really that demanding in terms of steel. But the crypto slip caskets definitely are 500 a pop. We got nine active colonists, and we got one prisoner, Mia, who's a family member, so we want a recruiter. Um, that basically means we are going to go to 10 people that have to be on the ship in order to get out. So that means 5,000 steel just for the caskets alone but we do have a bunch of space where we are uh, storing things we already have some some metal lying about but after we are done with the research um, smelting is going to be high on the priority just to turn all the all the slag into metal but I have to admit in my mind, we had more slag lying about. We're actually pretty darn low on slag. So there's that. Now, of course, we have a couple of mining sites, and we're just going to mine those to the ground. After that, we of course have trade as a fallback option. Whenever there's a bull goods trader, we're going to buy all the steel we can. Uh, pirate merchant left comes range. Yep, I think we already spoke last time. So... Yeah, we're, we're definitely heading towards the end. So for now, we're just going to milk this for all it's worth, since we're still assembling a couple of things. But what we can do is set it to... Actually, we will just allow sewing. That's fine. Once we start building, we just tear the roof off. We turn off the sun lamps. It will save us a huge amount of power. That's also going to be a nice upside. I uh, probably want to keep this one roofed just to... Not again, get into trouble with rain. Similarly for these, uh, for this, these little bits of equipment. And after that, we're just gonna start a building. So it could be that that things are gonna accelerate really, really quickly. So let's just have a, a quick look at each of the colonists. What are they doing? You're harvesting potato plants. You're researching. You're visiting a grave. Yep. That's just and hauling. So that's all part of uh, harvesting. Artinius is a, a night owl. Yep. It's also part of the of the harvest. Falling cloth. 
Yep, that's also the harvest, of course. And Marco is sleeping. And you're keeping things nice and tidy. Oh. So, all in all, pretty good. We don't really have anyone doing any form of crafting just yet, but I think that's because we deprioritized it. Or is Frondox actually? Oh yeah, you're our cook. Yep, yep. You're you're cooking, but you're also one of our prime crafters. Hmm. Artinius. Okay, you are sl smelting metal from slag. Cool. Okay. So this stockpile it's important. We're gonna make it critical to get the uh, steel slag in here. This is going to be the slag stockpile. So we're just going to see if we can draw it away from all other bits of storage. And indeed we have some uh, people ferrying of things about. Now once the food has been harvested, of course, that's the next. So let's uh, take a bit of inventory. Our food currently at just under 2000. Of that, a little bit of a little bit is hay, which we use to make... Uh, kibble for our dog besides that everything else is just useful for veggies um first i just click through everything is worth uh, 0 0.05 uh, nutrition so 20 units makes up one full unit of nutrition and each meal the simple meals or not the not the simple meals but the, the standard nice meals uh take a quarter of veggies and a quarter of meat and the lavish meals take half the veggies and half the meat also research i'm considering it done yeah we are done with our research so we'll just have a look at it but it basically means that if we're only uh, sticking to the fine meals then for every four nutrition or you could maybe basically turn around you need five uh, veggies to make a single meal so for 2000 we can make nearly 200 meals if we're also going to make lavish meals then the number gets cut in half and it's only a thousand so somewhere between the uh, no, uh, hundred so somewhere between 100 and 200 meals is what we can still make with all the veggies we have in stock um, of course simple meals they only need meat so after that we still will have 2500 meat remaining and we can make still a bunch more meals so chances of us uh starving not too uh, large on the other hand we have 10 people that all want a meal every day so 100 meals is only gonna last us for 10 days so we will need to uh, hurry up but we now have the final bits of ship uh, engine which again is not very very large also, 400 steel, 200 plasteel. We have all the components. So it's now evening. Shall we? Uh, we're gonna toggle this off. We're gonna toggle this off. And then we're gonna turn this into a, a no roof area. Oh, also, toggle you off and toggle you off and toggle you off. So all the electricity consuming bits in here are gonna go off and then. No, a roof is going to be everything that is not an electronic part. Like so, and this is now basically just going to be a open area. Also means that we can link this back to the main power grid and really use all that extra juice to power our base. Oh, yeah, this being uh, remote alpha 13, this is instantly open. So that means we can start planning our ship. So yeah, let's just work from the the biggest component. This one, these ones are three high. This one is the largest. So let's say just gonna build nicely in the middle here. I'll leave some space to to walk around and as such. Just add a engine. We can add a computer core. We can actually just add it next here. 
And then we have the structural beams. Can we fit two? Yes, we can. Nice. And then once this is all built, we can attach the crypto slip caskets, but they need to be attached to the structural beams. So this is going to be our very first project and the crypto sleep caskets are going to be the one that consumes just all other bits of steel. So we are getting really close to the end now. Could be that, that, that things are going to accelerate really quickly now and more quickly than I had anticipated. But that is nice. I mean, we are now at episode 88. So it would be nice if well, we could keep it under 100, maybe even just keep it under under 90 episodes. This definitely is one of my longest running series so far, especially if you consider that no RimWorld, it's one or two episodes per week. Um, and of course, because it's irregular and there's only a small, really dedicated group of you still watching the series. And of course, if something needs to be pushed around scheduling wise remote always gets rescheduled first so this is it is nice to finally just wrap it up So uh, we have a couple of folks that are usually building. They're actually building all of this. That's good. And there's of course a huge amount of materials that need to be lugged about. What are you doing there, Nessia? You're holding steel. Interestingly. Oh wait, did we actually just technically lock things in here by having these... Uh, Windmills are so close together, so that's why never nobody ever bothers going past there. Interesting. But what if we just simply deconstructed a part of the wall? Because let's face it, this is now an internal wall, not an exterior wall. Um, and chances are we're not going to make it to winter anyway. Might as well just uh, eat out a little bit. No. Uh, because we don't need to keep this on a temperature anymore. And that just massively simplifies moving through here for people when working on the ship. Wait. We still... People are still holding all kinds of things around, aren't they? Yeah, because there, I, I just noticed there's a, a medicine up here. You're here holding slag while medicine is, is just fading. I, I have paid a lot of particular attention to how it's going to be in Alpha 16. But I, I, I wonder if the holding priorities of the different kinds of items have been adjusted already so that things that can decay get dragged in first over things that can't decay or no things that are more scarce or whether they truly only pay attention to distance um i don't know that that uh, the developer tynan he just just released a blog post for alpha 17 which is basically just going to be a lot of bug fixes and, and balance changes and all kinds of ways to uh, prevent people from exploiting behavior. Also, we get visitors, which is good. So, Brandon, you. No, not strawberry plant. Brandon. Okay, they're going over there. So, might as well look them up before they run too far away. And let's see what they have to offer. They don't really have a lot to offer us. They got agave fruit. All the food we can get, might as well get it. Got some uh, shoddy pilas to sell, and that's it. Okay, cool. Then maybe you should haul the agave fruit. 
and everybody else is just fast asleep. Cool. Artinius is just building. Dagnesia is building. That's nice. Well, we're having two builders, especially day shift, night shift kind of deal. Works really well when you want to do construction projects like these. I expect us to have to fend off at least a single more raid, but you never know. Things get random. But if we actually manage to build the ship and get off the planet, that's going to be my very, very first Rimbold colony that I managed to successfully complete. Darknesia, of course, is needs to get treated again. <coughs> hey, we have a, a launch report. Cool. Cannot launch. We need a crypto sleep casket, a computer core, a reactor, and we need to have at least one person on board. Oh, makes, makes sense. AI personality, uh, personality core, critical component for the ship core. Okay. So launch report. Okay, that's just one more bit. Visitors are leaving, that, that's fine. Yes, we're actually hauling in some, some stuff now, good. Oh, I need to just tell someone, Nemesis, you. Could you please hold that medicine? It's really bugging me. All the other things, not so much, but the medicine out there, it's 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 a waste. Cool. Once we got the structural beams uh, ready, we can attach some crypto sleep caskets. Like so. Yeah, they all need to be attached this way. So mounting is always from the side of this. Um, but I think I'm just going to let them finish everything else first and then we're going to attach the crypto sleep caskets. That way we get a better inventory of how much steel we need. But from the looks of it, we're going to need between four and 5,000 steel. So we're actually going to need 4,000 uh, 4, steel because we have all the material. It's just the work needs to get done. This is not, oh, there's not enough plasteel on here just yet. But we have, so that's just a matter of hauling it. Okay, cool. So, crypto sleep caskets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That one's in the way. Let's see. Eight. Nine. And then number 10 could go over here. Or we can just chip out a bit of the wall. No. This one needs to... Um, Get deconstructed. Might as well deconstruct this one as well then. Hey, wait. If we actually gonna need all the metals, we can. And we really wanna get off of this rock ASAP. We might as well deconstruct some of the things that we no longer want or need to cannibalize some of the steel. Oh, and there is the final crypto casket. So, five on the one side, five on the other side, and that even includes one for Mia, who actually just successfully got recruited. I was already wondering, like, where's Mia? But we... Now I have Mia, the quack, part as part of our colony. So, first thing, of course, is we need to rename Mia to be the final bit of our, the final part of our motley crew. And we're gonna rename you to... Dessar. So, welcome to the colony, Tessar. And, yeah, you were pretty good, actually. Uh, growing, many animals, shooting, a lot of different skills. Steadfast and hypersensitive is always an interesting mix. But, and, yeah, sight is less efficient, so you're not going to be uh, one of our top-notch gunners. That, that's probably going to be... Uh, 
uncontested decision. Assign you to like that. Double check just how accurate are you? 87%. Okay, so not a rifle, but something shorter range you could could work with. At least sleeping, even though it's daytime. Uh, charge rifle, that's just gonna be standard fare. Oh, well, you got three shots for uh, for every uh, three opportunities with every attack, so that's okay. And get you your work schedule. Uh, okay, oh, uh, an aptitude for being social. Might as well just keep that at a four. Uh, animal handling, you're pretty useful at that. So let's make that a two. Cooking, five. Oh, okay, sure. Get an opportunity for that. Uh, not the greatest shot in the world, so we'll just keep uh, hunting as a necessity for just a, a pure fallback. Growing your passionate mouth, so we're gonna make that a number one priority for you, or a number two priority. Mining, you're pretty good at, so let's do that as well. And then it's gonna be hauling and cleaning. And that means we got ourselves another miner, that's good. Because for everybody, mining is lower than building, correct? Correct. That means we can set ourselves up for more mining over there. Um, Corbin is just smelting slag. Make sure that Corbin is not gonna go out and mine. And that's good because you're not a miner. Excellent. Right, so we'll just uh, slowly expand all of the local mining spaces. And now we just need to uh, move forward in time. Survive any attacks and raids that are going to get thrown at us. Um, but other than that, build the ship. And once we have the ship, load everybody up and launch off of this rock. We're so close to the end. Loving it. Ah, building the the main ship reactor and then it's truly only going to be just the caskets we can already complete two out of them of them that means we need a 3700 more steel in total having spent quite some uh, some steel already of course we uh, freed up some space in our steel storage it's all going to be good Manhunter pack, oh no, man hunting wargs. Oof, that's a lot of them. I I have lost colonies to manhunters, especially ma la large packs like these. So that means everybody is now restricted to our indoors area. Also means that you now the miners are gonna get. Pretty good chance to just do some mining down there because there's not a lot of other stuff to do. Also means I would prefer if our guns were active. It might even be worth considering just enabling the guns down here as well. Because they will be approaching from the south. That way at least we got a pretty good shot at it. We can't send you over there, of course, because it's forbidden. Yep, that, that's correct. Marco! Sniper rifle Marco. You flick the switch. Okay, this one already got flicked by someone else, I assume. Exactly. Then you are re-restricted. 
Oh, we need to enable that for indoors. Otherwise, people will try to go through here. Expand allowed areas. That's going to be the base. It's indoors. Yeah. Just count the entire wall here as indoors. Um, clear allowed area for indoors. The door, actually. Let's just disable that. So that way people are going to be slightly less tempted to go past here, I hope. Also, I just realized indoors. This is actually an indoors area. It's completely locked off from the outside. Holy moly. You know what? This could get a... Could become a, a nasty, nasty fight. Also, power is off. Ah, Marco's flicking it, okay. So why are you being so slow? Ah, muscle parasites. That doesn't help. Well, these are gonna go explode quite a bit. Then a couple are gonna die in the traps. And then the rest, I hope, is just gonna get massacred by the turrets. Ooh, that one's gonna explode as well. Nice. We are murdering quite some of them. Oh, funny, of course. The switch is out there. Oh, nice. If they're walking about here and just individually assaulting turrets, might as well enable <coughs> the power switch to go up. Might remember that when we connected this, we actually connected it to this as well. So we now have two ways to enable it. So from indoors, we can toggle this one on as well as those. That's going to help quite a bit. Also, all the, the meat from these works. Definitely a lot of extra food. That's going to help us make more meals. Uh, Marco, could you flick the switch, please? Yep, like that. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, a lot of turrets are going to explode, but, well, <laughs> it eventually gets hilarious. Ah. Yeah, that was the, the very weakness of this entire setup, of course. We, uh, oh, we lose one, we lose all. Because it's just linked together too strongly. Okay, yeah, we are... Probably gonna have to rebuild some of these turrets. The thing is, once they explode, uh, all the scrap that the turrets leave behind, it, it's about half of the, the metal value of the turrets. So the loss is not all that bad. Just have to mark them for, for hauling. Then we can disable this one. Disable that one. That one is gonna, oh, well, this one is going to get flicked. This one is not going to get flicked because it's outside, of course. And then let's see. A number of them are bleeding, so they might just actually die during the night just from bleeding out. And then for the daytime. Some of them are going to get tempted. So what we could do... Is use someone to bait them for attacking one. Well, on the other hand, no, if it is not needed, then it's not needed. Because they, they will tempt themselves, and if they just get in one by one to the turrets, that's going to be better for us anyway. Let's see, I might as well just set up for a, from a security perspective, rebuild this one, that one, that one. And those. Now that's another two, uh, four, six, seven. Just over a thousand steel. Half of that should be available in scrap. So it's just, it's 500 steel. But I need to mine out a little bit more. 
But that's okay. Let's have a look here. People have been mining and discovering more. You know what? We, we already had a plan here to just excavate rooms and things like that. So we might as well just make this into a bit of a, a strip mining operation. So just mine out all the uh, outsides. Let's, let's mine out just the entire edges of the room. And then one through the middle so that way we explore everything in the middle here. And then just tie it up to the upper side. Same thing here. Do that with all the rooms we wanted. So that way, you no. Know, we're gonna have some space for rooms if we still need it at some point. Okay. Plenty of bits for, for excavation available in here. Might as well just mark this for a bit larger, but we're not gonna go there just yet. Hey, our tamed dogs are not getting attacked. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I never realized. <laughs> wow. That that's almost an exploit. On the other hand, you don't really control your your pets. So, well, there's that. <clears throat> okay, so Enzo, you are now my guinea pig. And I'm going to set you up there. Going to draw in the final works just to to have it done with. Just look at how bloody it's gotten out here. It's it's pretty serious. Hey, we have struck steel. Where? 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 Down there. Nice. Okay. Submit. Not a lot. Thing here. Ah, okay. This this was just a bit too too conservative. And then um, that one. Cool. All right. So uh, these are probably dead. Yep. So all the borgs that are not yet dead, they're now marked for hunting. Let the borg hunt begin. Everybody is now unreleased again because of things are good. We'll just uh, disable the power. We are massively, massively generating more power than we need, which is good. Definitely gives us a, a bit of a buffer in our uh, five batteries now, or six batteries even. And all those works, they're gonna get turned into food. So if there ever was any issue or potential issue with food, it's uh, <clears throat> not an issue anymore. And poor Nemesis is gonna have to clean everything. Yeah, looking at the telescope, just, just deciding where we're going to go. Or maybe just wishing you really weren't here. But yeah, this is... Uh, you could look at it as an as, as a, as a issue, the attack. But on the other hand, no, it's an unexpected uh, bonus in food supplies. Those are always good. But we're not going to finish this uh, ship any time uh, today. So we're going to end the episode right here. So next episode, we're going to focus even more on, on mining. Now we struck steel here. We're going to mine all of it out. We're going to mine all of the metal over there. Uh, metal down here. We're just going to keep searching. Uh, clean up some of the blood here. And just rebuild because there's probably going to be a raider attack. And if you no, know, we've got to get a raider attack with less defenses. That might not be the best. On the other hand... No, I'm reconsidering. We're actually not uh, going to rebuild the uh, the turrets here. Just going to hold this. We're going to actually use these turrets and we're just basically going to strip them. Um, and we're truly going to strip these. Okay. 
Okay, they just got cancelled. Let me just mark everything for, for holding here. So that's going to save us a thousand steel. We got uh, about a 500 steel from the different bits of slag. So it was basically we just, just got more steel. We built another uh, casket with that. We need to mine less. And hopefully next episode we can finish our ship and fly away. But that's going to be next episode. So for now, I'm going to thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you again next time. Bye bye.